Welcome back, Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. We haven't done a lot of Joshua Williamson books on this couch. The last mm. one I feel like was Justice League versus Suicide Squad, which you guys, and this is going back several years, <laughs> uh, responded pretty positively to. And so I thought, hey, let's do another one of those. And that's called The Rogues, or just Rogues. But this came out last year, oh. and it's a black label book, and it doesn't star Batman, and I don't <laughs> want to hear it from any fans. <laughs> who were like, oh, I hate Black Label. I wish Black Label would only do books that aren't about Batman. Why does Black Label only do books about Batman? Because this sold like shit. <laughs> That's well, why. I didn't, didn't do that. No, don't do that though. If you're a Flash fan, you're secretly a Rogues fan. Because <laughs> the Rogues, I mean, we've talked about the Rogues and the names of Rogues galleries and yeah. how there's only one that calls themselves the thing they are. Right. And it's the Flash Rogues. And so it's like, if you like The Flash, then you also love Captain Cold, and Captain Boomerang, and all the other captains, <laughs> and also the trickster, who is not the Joker. If you squint hard, I asked Josh if he had any fun behind the scenes info yeah. to mm -hmm. share, like how, what was the process like? And he says, the only thing that I can tell you is that I wish more people bought it. And then, like an hour later, he got back to me and was like, and I had three different last page reveals. Oh. Oh, shit. And I was shit. like, well, oh. there we go. <laughs> the original idea was it was going to be like a Flash story because Josh Williamson had a huge run on the Flash, no pun intended. Mm. You know what? Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> and he was like, I want to do this story about the rogues. And like basically editorials like, no. <laughs> Come on, let me do the Sinister Six, but just the rogues. No. no it's very that. different. You see, that's interesting because Sony would love it if there was a solo, almost R-rated, this one is straight up R-rated, book about the Sinister Six, because then they'd have something to adapt. So you're saying this is not like a Rogues versus Flash book? No. Flash is not even here. Flash. This is like a, we are following the Rogues and we're seeing what they're doing. Yes, and I want to say that Flash almost doesn't even come up ever in this book. Hmm. This is also drawn by Leo Max, some of these folks, these artists, love to have these like one name mm. things like Zermanico. Uh, but <laughs> that's Le a name. Yes, and he's great. Okay. And so is Leo Max. <laughs> Leo Max, a fun Italian artist who was brought into this book and ascribes a, a, a level of grit and grossness to it that this <laughs> book needs. This is an angry book, <laughs> and I was like, this book is unhappy to say the least. And I think these two are gonna love it. And Josh is like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty nasty. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it is starring the rogues. Right. And it's a black label book and it really leans into it. Although, unfortunately, there's no full frontal nudity or hardcore <laughs> pornography in this book. So, you know. How are we even doing it? Really? <laughs> Maybe that's why it didn't sell. Probably. Maybe if, that's probably if Leonard Snart, AKA Captain Cold, had just shown his wang, <laughs> On like page two, we yeah. would have gotten some clicks. Maybe to get some coverage on, uh, on Bleeding Cool or yeah. on uh, Jimmy Fallon. No, you got to have a, a last page reveal on issue one where it's just a silhouette from the back. Yes, boom. Yeah, or one of those die cut covers where you open it up. There's the dick. <laughs> so the story opens in this dive bar that super villains go to. It's in kind of the present day. I need to articulate this is not in continuity. Right. The story actually opens with. Sam, and Sam is a crime-solving ape, and he hails from Gorilla City, because of course all sentient apes do in the DC universe. <laughs> and Sam starred in his own Vertigo series that like nobody read. And also he is in a number of other like fun side stories, but he, he's a sentient ape who was super smart, who was brought from Gorilla City into the into man's world, and, be, and started a detective agency, and he palled around with his hot blonde, and Does he work with Detective Chimp? Or detective is that a Chimp, different detective? It's a different Detective Simeon. And <laughs> Detective Chimp does not come from Gorilla City. He's not a gorilla. Right. He's a member of the Great Ape family. He's not a gorilla. I know, but like <laughs> that's a little bit weird that those are two... Okay, the reason why it's not... Uh, it, it's weird to the layman, I understand. Uh -huh. But I, uh -huh. it is not weird because apes sell comic books. <laughs> I see. Also, he's part of the, yeah, but part of the pantheon. We're of all things monkeys. Need, well, that's true, but in uh, terms of sales and why there's a, there's a conspicuous amount of monkeys in DC, so and I'm they're not, not all directly related <laughs> to each other. I'm not questioning the monkeys. I'm questioning sure. the fact that they're both detectives. Right. Isn't that I, weird? Well, that could be because the publishing label is actually called Detective Comics. Right. And so we know detective books sell, and 
covers with monkeys on them, Cell. <laughs> Why not marry the two? Twice. Would you Listen, rather one of them be a dry cleaner? I mean, or anything. He could be a firefighter. Yeah. You know? But then that's the... Or a policeman. Right, yeah. I guess that's like a detective. Exactly. I mean, that like is actually... A detective is a kind of... But, but more, you know... They're more private eyes than they yeah, are Yeah, or like a yeah. super spy. Well, and Detective Chimp... I'm sure chimp, there's a super spy chimp, actually. Oh, yeah, but like Detective be. Chimp is more like a Sherlock Holmesian detective. Mm. Whereas Sam is more like a hard-boiled noir detective. <laughs> I see. So there's there's varying <laughs> levels of detection going on between these apes. But anyway, Sam is sad because it turns out he was fucking that blonde. And there's a lot of interspecies erotica in this book. <laughs> and so, you know, hold on to your hats. Uh, but yeah, so he's sad because he got dumped. Because, you know, he's a goddamned ape. And she's an effing human being. The fact that it happened at all is kind of baffling and frightening. Yeah, but... Why would he logically be even attracted to a human? Why doesn't he find another <laughs> Right. Why not know, find another gorilla? ape? Well, because he was pulled from Ape City, uh, he's not I from can't go here. back to oh. Ape City. Yeah. And when I try Why to fuck not? the gorillas in the zoo, I get kicked out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I have to keep going from from zoo to zoo. Apparently you can't consent me. if you're not sentient. <laughs> exactly. It's really weird. But that's not fair because just because I'm sentient, you know what I mean? Like, if I were just a regular ape, I'd be allowed to do that all the time. Right. But because I have sentient, they don't, that's messed up. Uh, so it's actually the only way that Sam get his rocks off is if it was with a human being. These are the books. Well, legally. Yeah, exactly, legally, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So anyway, he's sad, and he's, he's drowning his sorrows in a pitcher of beer, uh, being served by the Condiment King, because that's the kind of uh, group we have. Yes, yeah. this may be the first time Condiment King has actually appeared in a book on this show. Yeah, this is insane. I think so, yeah. He only says three things. Like, he's like, please don't fight in my bar. But he's there, and but it's his bar. It is his bar. Condiment King is doing well for himself in this alternate reality. I imagine he makes a fantastic cocktail. No doubt. Yeah, of course, because he's, he, he's the master of condiments. He knows what ingredients go well together. What is Sam doing in a villain bar? That's a great question. And I think he's an it's ape. because this is more like a ceasefire zone. I you know, see. He's, he's not even really a superhero. You know, he's a private eye. He's almost a villain. He takes pictures of you while you're, you know, cheating on your wife. Exactly, yes. What an asshole. From some perspective. Or you're playing patty true. cake. All right, yeah, that's what he's saying. <laughs> he is mistaken by another D-list villain for Gorilla Grodd. Now, Gorilla Grodd is, if we're talking, if we're going to grade our DC apes, Grodd is A-tier supervillain. Mm. He's got telepathy. He's also super smart. Yep. And ruthless. Sam... Did he run Gorilla City? He does run Gorilla City. Well, okay. he is one of the two rulers that I know off the top of my head who mm. have run Gorilla City, neither of whom is Sam. But Grodd is a big deal. Sam does have mild telepathy, but not Wait. enough for him to rule Gorilla City. Do all apes from Gorilla City right. have telepathy? Now, okay, so Sam was retconned into being connected to Grodd. He wasn't always from mm. Gorilla City. He wasn't always in some way related to Grodd. It was just that somebody like Ethan noticed that there's two talking apes <laughs> in DC continuity, right. neither of whom are Detective Chimp. What's up with that? Right, maybe, so they're, they're, like, maybe they're connected. Maybe they're connected That'd make more somewhere. sense than if they were two totally separate. Sorry, I didn't realize that was gonna <laughs> roll like that. <laughs> That's a, that's a hell of a way to get get our, get our attention. I kept feeling the chapstick in my pocket. I'm just like, what oh. the fuck is that? Do oh, I have a chapstick in my pocket, or am I just happy to see me? So then, anyway, this dealer's villain is like, oh my god, Grodd! I, I'm not Grodd, man. I'm Sam. I'm Sam Ape, and he's like, hey, it's not Grodd, you guys. It's not Grodd. I'm sorry. And then he's like, holy shit, I know you. You used to ship that blonde. What's up with her? And he's like, I'll kill you, you son of a bitch. Ah. <laughs> well, you know, he is an ape after yeah. all. But, uh, and he's also upset and, and drinking. He's sad and he's, and he's an alcoholic. So, right, you know. Right. Uh, so the bar fight breaks out and... And Conor McKinnon's like, no! Yeah, he is very... What did I just say? Right, but over in the corner booth are the rogues. You know, headed up by... Captain Cold, who just got shots for everybody. And they're all just kind of like staying out of that business. And uh, the reason why Snart is so quiet is because during Sam's drunken ramblings, he mentions that Gorilla Grodd is sitting on top of a huge stash of untraceable gold. Because Grodd is not a supervillain who is in it for the money. He's in it for the power. He has all this money in Gorilla City, and nobody bothers it because... A, nobody can find Gorilla City except for gorillas. It's not like they have like some kind of gorilla sense. They just oh, and Batman know the that way one time. back. Yeah, and Batman the one time. Batman Universe, great book. <laughs> but also because Grodd just, I don't know. 
maybe he's like a dragon and he just <laughs> wants to collect as much shiny go pretty gold. He is an ape after all. And we're going to say that a lot because there's a lot of apes in this book. But, uh, you know, Captain Cold keys into this whole thing. Holy shit, there is a stack of untraceable gold headed up by a monkey <laughs> in a city that, like, has no jurisdiction. Right. And won't come after me. Right, and a monkey that doesn't have super speed. And doesn't care. <laughs> like, yes, yes. I can I could probably knock off Gorilla Grodd. You know, I won't be able to stop the Flash. Right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what kind of gets into his craw. Now, he sits on that for ten years. What? Okay. Going back to that telepathy thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course he'd be a detective. Right. He well, can, yeah. He, can, he knows who he you're... knows shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, true. he'd be better off being like a television, like, oh, mind like mentalist, reader. like yeah. John Edwards? Yeah, like John Edwards. <laughs> oh, you don't make money like that. So 10 years later, we check back in with Captain Cold. He lives in a trailer under the bridge in Central Down City. by the river. Down by the <laughs> river. And I love just how miserable and gross and pathetic it is. It's just, this is the book. The book is just a seagull throwing up into some trash. <laughs> he also looks like, or the place looks like it was built on top of a uh, old garbage pile. Yeah, no, I think like it is. Dump. I think he yeah. is in the dump. Yeah. So, uh, Snart's asleep. He has clearly re retired the Captain Cold persona, mm -hmm. and we know this because he is woken up by his parole officer who pours a beer on his head and is like, hey, Snart, I'm here to check in. And he's like, oh, you're not due for another couple days. He's like, yeah, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I, I, I can do that. Yeah. That's also, parole point. officers will probably do that yeah. once in a while. Yeah. He's like, here, fill this cup and I, while, right. I, while I ransack your place and make sure you don't have any secret cold technology. Oh, what's this freezer doing in here? Yes. <laughs> you know you're not allowed to have these. <laughs> exactly. What? I can't have cold ice. Oh, okay. come on, man. I need ice cubes. It's hot as balls out here. Nope, sorry. It makes ice. You can't have it. Yep. <laughs> you know the rules. I don't make them up. I was planning a gazpacho for dinner. <laughs> Can we go back a second? Yeah. You called him Snart? His name is Leonard Snart. Oh, yes, he is I, I was also that. confused. <laughs> listen, you're like, Captain Cold, and then Snart, and I was like, I'm sorry, Wait, who's Snart? Yeah, no, it, listen, I think if you're a, if you're a premier Flash villain, you're destined to have an insane name, <laughs> like Aobard Thawne or Leonard <laughs> Snart. The, the rogues could have a subdivision of people with insane real names. It would only have two people right now. I was going to say, are there any others? I mean, they all have crazy names because they all have to be either alliterative or memorable. Right. So anyway. Snart is definitely memorable. Right. So uh, the parole officer finds his Captain Cold glasses, which are, of uh, course, we've established. Those are those, uh, those glasses that you wear up in the... Yeah, the, the, for snow blindness. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Because uh, they reduce like, the amount of light that right, can come in. And he's like, in. hey, man, what are these? And he's like, they sell for a lot on eBay. And he's like, oh. Puts it in his pocket. Hmm. You're gonna be late for work. See you next week. And gets in the car. And he's like, "Oh, come on, man! You're not gonna give me a ride." And then he drives away. Snart has to get onto the bus. Mm. Uh, there's actually a really nice moment, and it's really sad. This whole book is just this. Just getting kicked in the balls over and over again. <laughs> but Snart, on his way into Central City, he sees this really nice mural, like made on this old wall, like a piece of Central City, an old school piece of Central City, and it's this just this beautiful uh, mural of the working man, these blue collar, hardcore people who built this city. And it just says, we built Central City. And it's like industry and just just the, the working man. You know? We built Central City <laughs> on crime and guns. There we go, all right. We can do that because that's parody. <laughs> we see that Snart works on an assembly line and he gets a call from the foreman. Hey, the boss wants to see up in his room. We go up to his office, he's like, am I fired? And they're like, no, we want to give you a promotion. Oh. And he's like, oh. All right. Snart really looks like Ed Harris right there. Yeah. A little bit. I, I'd do that. I'd, I'd, I'd make that casting. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're like, so it's going to be a little bit more work, but better pay. I think it's going to be all right for you. He's like, okay. So when Snart leaves the office, the two guys who talked to him and gave him the promotion are talking to each other. And they're like, oh my God, can you believe how pathetic that old man was? Oh, yes, sir. You know, sir. Huh? Didn't he used to be like a big screaming deal? Like, wasn't huh. he Mr. Freeze or something? And they're like, no, that was Captain Cold. <laughs> Very different. I mean, and actually, the parole officer did the same thing. He's like, oh, you got your freeze raising. It's a, like, below zero gun. Like, it's a different... It, they do have different technologies. Mm. Oh, my How God. How are they different? Okay, so <laughs> they... Well, Mr. Freeze... Other than the name. They came about them in different ways. 
I can't tell you what specific technologies oh, okay. that each of them do, right. but it is it's fundamentally explicitly different. said right. that Snart and Freeze do arrive at their cold weaponry through different avenues, and they are not reaching the same source. Okay. Like, they're not both just doing the same do thing. Do they have the same impact, or...? They yeah. can have similar impact. They have similar... Im they are imperceptible to the regular reader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They both shoot snow and ice and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think the idea is that Snart makes things cold, like he when he shoots it, it freezes the thing, like it it lowers the temperature of the object. It, no, you know what? Because <laughs> Mr. Freeze just shoots cold out of a gun. Snart makes the thing he shoots cold. What's the difference? There isn't one. <laughs> one wears a suit. The other one wears a parka. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and one is sympathetic and the other one is just pathetic. The two guys are laughing at Snart and they're talking about how basically he's an ex-con, he's old, he will do whatever we say, he'll never put up a fight, like he's a perfect promotion. Mm. And then they all just laugh at him and we see him just keel over in rage through the cacophonous laughter of his betters. So Snart clocks out, he gets back on the bus, he looks out the window to see the, the mural, it's been knocked down. Oh. He actually saw workers leaning against it earlier in the day. Yeah. So when he comes back, it's gone. There's another like banner up there. Central City is on the move. Oddly enough, no flash in the iconography of their of their thing, which I mm. think is maybe a deliberate thing. Maybe Josh is like, I, I wrote for Flash for many years. I'm going to see if I can not put him in this book <laughs> about Flash films. Like at all. Yeah. So Snark goes home, and he just trashes the place and then proceeds to pull out all the junk that makes his arctic gun that's mm. hidden behind other pieces of... It, mm -hmm. Like, he'll never find... They would find a gun that makes things absolute zero, which I believe is the idea. Mm. Uh, but they won't find all the components hidden behind, like, my microwave. Like, a third of it is over there, another mm -hmm. piece over there. So he just pulls it all together and then spends all night rebuilding it. He cuts apart his mattress, man. Yeah, that's yeah, he kept. He put parts, he put parts in, the in there. Yeah, so he builds his weapon, the thing that makes him special, mm -hmm. and then proceeds to go and visit his sister. Now, his sister is also a supervillain and a oh. member of the Rogues. What? I didn't yeah. know that. She is a figure skating supervillain. <laughs> Oh, so they, they kind They're of complement each other. Yeah. I guess like he shoots the runway and yeah. she slides down it. Well, she's kind of useless without him. Yes. Unless, Unless it's, it's winter, winter time. Winter. That's true. And there's a lot of ice around. Right. But she is also really capable. Mm. She used to be would the golden like, glider. Would she way. kill people with her ice skates? Yes. And maybe she will in this book. Oh, she yeah, better. The golden well, yeah, right? Like that's the promise of a that's why you of put a her in there. ice skating yeah. super villainess yeah. who is in an R-rated book. She is now, at this point, she works in a female crisis center. So we watch her, like, visited by uh, one of her superiors who brings in this mother and two kids. He, you know, he found her at the shelter. We're going to move her to another apartment. She does, and then Snart is just waiting for her outside. And he's like, hey, wouldn't it have been nice if we had somebody like you watching out for us? She's like, go away. <laughs> we haven't spoken in a long time. You're a perpetual loser and kind of a, a bastard. And I know that you're here to use me. She doesn't say that, but oh. like it's implied from her just walking away from him. He chases after her. They try, he, 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 he does not believe in her altruism. He's like, so what's the angle? What do you do? She's like, no, <laughs> I like to help people now. And he's like, I've realized no, it makes really. me feel good. Yeah, and he's like, no, you don't. And then she proceeds to explain like really why she got out of the game. It's because Weather Wizard and Captain Boomerang died. Like oh. that was the wake up call. Like we are not invincible. We're not gonna fight the Flash forever. Someday our number is going to come up, and I'd rather have done something decent with my life. Mm -hmm. And Snart would never think of that because he's just a perpetual shithead. Interesting. So Do they go into detail as to what happened to them? No. no. Oh, it's just like they died. They died. Maybe and Flash killed them. Maybe they maybe. killed themselves or each other. Yep. Or, it, it yeah. was it was rough. Yeah. Like it, I mean, it scared the shit out of her. Yeah. It would be very interesting if the Flash in a black label book. Yeah. Just fucking kill people. Yeah. Which you can get in the upcoming Suicide Squad video game. Oh. The idea is that like all those justice, the ju ugh, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> the idea is that the Suicide Squad is brought in to kill the Justice League because the Justice League have been brainwashed into becoming murderers. Mm. So you have to you as the ju you have the you as the Suicide Squad have to murder Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Aquaman. Like, fuck right. you. <laughs> what a misery fest. No thanks. 
Also, I think it's pay to play, so eat shit. No, oh. the, this is better this way. This is cool. This is what you want? No. Fucking edge lords. Yeah, no, I want a Superman game. And I want no. another Arkham game. No. No, <laughs> Suicide Squad. You can be Harley Quinn. <laughs> Let me give my spiel. I will understand if you say no. She's like, all right, talk to me. And then we cut to the next member of his team. And actually, we could see that each time we introduce a member of his rogues, these new rogues, yeah. mm -hmm. they get their label. So we transition into the sequence where we recruit the team. Because mm -hmm. this book is a heist book. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah, the gold! The gold! Yeah, we gotta get that gold. Uh-huh. So How did I forget in five minutes? Uh, listen, it, because the book pulls you in. You're just like, you're just so, look at this wretch. What's that all about? <laughs> oh, I see. He wants to steal gorilla gold. So, I also love this world. I know, it's just so drab. It's gritty. It's gritty. It is gritty. And it, it, for me, like Josh does a lot of really cool stories. He's written for Superman, Batman. He gets it. He's, he's even written a whole damn crisis. You're saying Josh can do the gritty. He can do the gritty. <laughs> so we check in with the con man. That's our first member of the group. That's the trickster. Uh, the con man is essentially our John Edwards type character who uh. reads the room and we see that the room that he is performing for is made up of geriatrics. It's just a bunch of old people who are delighted by his antics. Uh, he also looks younger than the rest of them, but if you look closer, you'll see that he is practically plastic. Uh, when he finishes his set, he goes into his dressing room. Captain Cold's already there waiting for him. And we find out that the trickster has been addicted to plastic surgery. And so he's just been trying to maintain his youth Ooh, through yeah. surgery the whole time. Which is why it's like, ugh. You should uh, get up with Clayface a little bit. I agree. There'd be some kind of fun crossover. But I think he's like, this is like an almost like an, ex an exercise. Can I not reference Flash? Can I not rely on any of the Batman stuff? <laughs> Batman doesn't even come up. No word. Doesn't say, there's no bat in this book. It's amazing. All right, all right. So he pitches the big money scheme. And Trickster's like, I make money. Like, I'm already doing well. Yeah, I got I'm a car. Fine. I got a car for every day of the week. I have a mansion. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I bilk old people out of their social security checks. That. And Snart's like, your antics are old, tired, and miserable, like your audience, who will eventually die off, and then you'll be back to peddling for quarters in the street. I don't think you understand. Mm. There's always going to be more old people. <laughs> right, but the old people are not always going to be listening to... Ta -ta 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 -ta. <laughs> they're going to be listening to things like... The, In our retirement home, we're going to be listening to Metallica. I know. I'm going to be listening to Metallica. The, 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 the room next door is going to be listening to Ghostface Killa. Like, it's going to be weird. <laughs> we're going to be awesome. <laughs> we're going to be awesome old people. <laughs> so Trickster says no. And then disappears. Hmm. Uh, but he also squeezes his rubber chicken at him. He does, because Trickster has rubber chickens that he wields in battle. Fart. <laughs> so then we check, we check him with the killer. And the killer is Bronze Tiger. Bronze Tiger is... He's actually not a red member of the Rogues. This but but we, I've, we've heard of him before. We've had, he's come up a couple of times. He's been a member of the uh, Secret Six. Mm. And uh, he's also been in a lot of like classic older books. Uh, the kind of books that Joshua Williamson definitely read uh, back in the day. Bronze Tiger, super trained, he's really capable, and he's also like a ruthless killer, or at least he used to be, but now he's reformed and he teaches self-defense classes, <laughs> which uh, pays like crap. Uh, Snark goes to him and he's like, hey listen man, I need you. He's like, I took a vow, I'm not gonna break it, I don't, I'm not gonna kill anybody. He, yeah, I don't hurt people anymore. I don't hurt anybody anymore, I, I help people. He didn't become a healer, but at least he became a person who helps. Like he can use his training to, you know, for good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Lisa is there, his sister, and she's there to kind of sweeten the deal. And Bronze Tiger's like, I'm listening. What's going on here? You know? hmm. So then we check in with the muscle. And Magenta, she can like manipulate objects and make oh. energy fields and stuff like that. It's sad because now she can't really control it too well and needs to take medication to keep it in line, mm. lest her powers run amok and kill people. And so we uh. meet up with her in the line of the pharmacy and she can't afford her medication. Lisa offers to pay for it in exchange for listening to our sales pitch. Uh, then we check in with the demolitions expert, and that is Heatwave. Uh, Heatwave is essentially like a Firefly type character. He's a pyromaniac, and he has no powers except that he likes to burn things. And so he has no powers. Oh man, I, his powers are. Then I have powers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but he burns like buildings down. <laughs> okay, fair. So. So his power is in his audacity. That's true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, He's just not afraid to. I mean, that's basically half he, he's of an the arsonist. Gotham Rogues. I don't, yeah, okay. That's true. That's true. Many so, of them don't have powers. Most right? of them don't have powers, yeah. Shouldn't Heat Wave and Captain Cold be at, you know. At odds? Yeah. No, they actually. They, hate each other? they seem to 
have more camaraderie than he, than than Snart and anyone else in the Rogues. Hmm. So the assembled crew here meets up to go over the plan and get their one other missing member of their crew. Oh, so this is the pitch meeting. This is the pitch meeting. Uh, Trickster shows up and they're like, I thought you said no. He's like, that's the trick. Yeah. <sighs> It's fine. Slap. Exactly. <laughs> That's the trickster for you. So, every day is opposite day when you're <laughs> dealing with the trickster. Cool. You sound fun. I would love to work with you all the time. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Which God. means I wouldn't. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> See Neither. what I did there? Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. The trickster. <laughs> Man, you know what you should do? You should totally go up against the Joker or something. I'm sure he wouldn't just kill you and then solve all my problems for me. Oh dear God, no. <laughs> So then he, he proceeds to explain, like, this is, you know, Gorilla Grodd runs Gorilla City. We're going to go to Gorilla City. I've been hearing about this. Like, I've, I've been working on this plan for 10 years. Mm. We're going to steal Gorilla Grodd's gold out from under him in Gorilla City. And they're all like, no. No, he'll kill us. Yup. Just like the photographer who took this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. He's surrounded by, by men skulls. And the Grodd and, is just coming at the camera. Yeah. There's no way the, that photographer made it out alive. Nope, the camera made it out. That's it. <laughs> So he's like, look, the, the, as I understand it, Gorilla City has more gold than, more, than, than, than Fort Knox. It will set us up forever. We're, we, and then proceeds to explain, like, we're losers, and it's clearly projection. Like, Snart mm. hates himself. He hates where he is. He shouldn't be a lowly, old, has-been, never-was, on an assembly line, being laughed at by his superiors. But he's like, we're all losers. <laughs> None of us are happy. We all deserve this pain. I'm happy. No, we're not. You're garbage. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I picked I, I picked people with horrible insecurities and low self-esteem. <laughs> like so, my sister. So we need to go, and we're going to spring Mirror Master. He's going to be He's our getaway. Right. Uh, okay. Of course, Mirror Master has a Mirror Master gun that can access the Mirror Dimension. And so it's, if there's any reflective surface, you can fire it at that. You can go into it, go into the Mirror Dimension, and then jump out of any other reflective surface anywhere. Right. So that's a very powerful power. Big time. Yeah. And only Mirror Master can wield the gun. Like he only he knows how to do it. Uh, Is it like coded to his DNA or he's just Right, like a just like, too like, hard like a lawgiver. I I think it's just that like it's Imagine trying to paint with a gun. Right. That's what, that's he, what does. he does. He's an artist. Yeah, he is truly an artist with this Mirror Master gun. Okay. Uh, also, he's the only one who knows how to navigate through the mirror dimension. Like even mm. if you could use it because that's the thing is right. later we'll find out like the... if you're smart enough you could probably use it but well, yeah once everything's you get just in, backwards right you, well yeah but how do you get out it's like <laughs> it's a mess if it's every reflective surface everywhere how the how the hell right. do I go home mm. right like the next mirror next to me will take me to Timbuktu you never know <laughs> so they break into this like secure facility to spring Mirror Master he Snart pitches it as he's being held against his will we gotta break him out He's like in a mental institution. We gotta get him out of here. Uh, so they We're go in. Him. Yep. So everybody's using their powers. Magenta uses her powers to like turn off the security system for a little while, so they can sneak in. Uh, they do, and they, they get like six steps through the door, and they realize it's a rehab clinic. Like, oh. He he checked himself in there. Oh. Good for him. He's not part of this plan. Like right. We didn't talk ahead of time. So they go into his room. They collect him, and they're just like, all right. Evan, let's go. Uh, so they're like, all right, Evan, let's go. And then they find out, like, he's not clean either. Oh. He's still he been detoxing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. And Lisa's like, dude, we can't do this. Yeah, and, this is not going to work. Yeah, it's not like, no, if we don't have him, it doesn't work. Like, we need to get this gold. You understand? Oh, my God. Well, maybe just wait a couple months until he's made some progress. <laughs> no, it has to be now. <laughs> Why? Is the gold suddenly going to go somewhere? Had, it's been I, 10 years. I had and now a temper tantrum and I ruined my bed. I can't go back there. Look, next time my parole officer comes, he's going to know something's he's up. Gonna it's going to be over. Yeah. I have, between now and whenever he randomly shows up. Exactly. Exactly. So the alarms go off because Magenta didn't knock out everything. Oh, God. Because everyone's at their worst. Yeah. They've been uh, out of the game for exactly. a while. Exactly. Heatwave pulls up the van. Well, and they gets weren't that great there. to begin with. No, that's true. That too. Is he going to shoot something with the cold gun? Yes. Okay. Yes, he is. <laughs> he better, because he went to all the trouble of making it, and he hasn't uh, shot anything yet. Yeah, no. Because about Captain Cold, well, but and right nothing's now, got frozen yet. That's true. That's true. Trust me. Things get cold. Yeah, I promise you. Uh, but he is also a master manipulator. Like, we're seeing his true superpower is using people. <laughs> right. 
so Heat Wave shows up. They try to get in the car. They get flanked by SWAT. They're all screwed. Hands in the air. We're all done. And Lisa, his sister's like, wait, please. And the cop goes, she's heading right for us. Like, we are going to execute these people. Oh, my God. Captain Cold shoots all of them with his gun. They're all frozen. And he's like, I am so disappointed in all of you. Like, we used to be rogues. We used to be something. <laughs> and then he proceeds to take the butt of his gun and knock the head off of one of the cops. Oh, wow. And they're like, uh, and he smashes all the cops. And he's like, now you're all accessories to murder. I don't want to see you guys pussyfooting around anymore. Oh, my God. We're in this. No one's backing out of this. Yeah, this is hardcore. We're super villains. Yep. We're doing this. We're back in the game. Right. Whether you want to be or not. Exactly. He's like, yeah, let's do this. Like, let's all pose for a picture no one's going to take. <laughs> and they're all really upset. Yes, and they're all like, no, I don't, don't oh. show my face in this picture. Interestingly enough, there will be a picture of the rogues that no one takes, but someone did, and they have it. I don't know if it's like a <laughs> metaphysical picture or if it's like a real photo, whatever. So Director Chase of the DEO is like, I got a ping that snarts. The parole officer didn't find him, and his place was torn up. Okay, who cares? But then uh, she's getting more info about, like, this guy went missing, and this person went missing. Like, all these rogues who have always been under surveillance, mm -hmm. suddenly disappeared. She's like, oh shit. Also, well, we found like seven cops that were frozen to Oh death. yeah, oh, that too. Uh, but <laughs> great, the rogues are at it again. We watched them, you know, Indiana Jones their way <laughs> to Africa, where Gorilla City is. They are using the trickster's money, because he's the only one who has any financing, yeah. uh, to basically pay for their trip. You know, he's he's bribing people every step of the way. Mm. They did get Mirror Master, right? They did. They pulled yeah. Evan out, but he needs to detox through this whole situation. Okay. Uh, but they do have his mirror gun, and so they're like, all right, well, we're good. So they also force Trickster to buy them, like, camera equipment so that they can pretend to be a documentary film group. Right. But if they're filming things, suddenly no one will pay them any money. They're I'm like, undercover. that's a fair point. Yeah. Why are you wearing these very thin glasses? Oh yeah, no, he doesn't wear those. Uh, <laughs> no, he's got goggles. Yeah, that's yeah. right, he's got goggles, but yeah. But they do the same thing. They do. Yeah, he wears them the whole time, and it's like, you're wearing goggles. <laughs> uh, you look like a psycho. You're not a documentary person. Right, so they go to the boat that's supposed to take them to the next leg of their journey, and the boat is half in the water. Like, it is sinking. And he's like, what the crap is this? Trick's like, dude, this is the boat. And then, you know, they didn't like FaceTime me to show me what condition the boat was in. Yeah, but you know, what we're are trying you... to be under the radar here. I'm not going to charter a yacht. But it's halfway out of the water. It's, right. It's un. You can't use it. Exactly. Yeah, it's been beached. Yeah, so Magenta, you know, rallies, pulls the boat out of the water, and like gets it, gets it into working order. Okay. And Snart's like, all right. She's getting a nosebleed, which is, of course, every pop culture indication that she's using her powers too hard. Uh -huh. uh, but she eventually lets it go, and Evan goes to her rescue because, like, she is dependent on chemicals, so is he. But also, they are trying to get better. You know, okay. they, they find solace in each other's arms. We see that happen a number of times. Bronze Tiger helps Lisa onto the boat. Clearly, Bronze Tiger and Lisa are developing some kind of romance. Mm. They get on the boat. They make themselves dinner. It's a really sweet moment between all of them. It's the only quiet camaraderie we actually get between this clandestine group of assholes. Lisa actually says to her brother at some point or another, she's like, I didn't know you could drive a boat. Is that why you're Captain Cold? Because you can captain a boat? <laughs> like, when did you learn that? And he's like, oh, mom taught me. She's like, when? And he's like, oh, between like you and me. Like, oh, that's much nicer. Cause I was gonna be like, it's a boat. Right. It's got a wheel. Yeah, it's this stick, that's forward. <laughs> Turn it in the direction forward, you want it to go. Forward, left, right. Yeah. Now capturing it well right. yeah. is different. But yeah. I am essentially following the river. You know, I'm not in the open ocean. I don't need to worry about like the compass. Yeah, I don't have to chart myself by the stars. Exactly. And even if I did, maybe I could do that. I'm smart enough to build a cold gun. I could probably know where the North Star is. But he tells this really sad story. It's actually a nice story about how like, because dad used to beat the crap out of them and everything. But uh, mm. uh, mom took him out. Like they'd rent a boat and they'd go. And you know, it was like one of the few happy memories he has. And of course it predates his sister. So that's also even sadder. Little does she know that she knew there was evil in him. She went out on the boat with him to drown him every time. But didn't, didn't have the heart. To yeah. Yeah. Follow through. Oh, that's even darker than this book is. <laughs> but mentions, maybe. You know, that's canon. <laughs> to this. So Snart mentions, like, so when are you, so you going to tell me about you and uh, Bronze Tiger messing around? Mm. She's like, I don't know what you mean. He's like, come on. 
Like, she says it like like she's a wave, like, what are you talking what? about? Yeah, and he's like, come on, I'm still your brother. Like, I know when my sister's in love. So then uh, mm-hmm. they have their they have their dinner. It's kind of a, just a sweet moment where they just go off. And they're like, man, when was the last time we were able to do this? And it's like, it's been too long. And I'm <laughs> well, like, like well, have some like a of barbecue? You, yeah, just like sit and be merry. Right. Just a bunch of super villains, a bunch of psychopaths sitting around. Having burgers. <laughs> so they end up in Gorilla City. Or what? what appears to be Gorilla City. You know, Snart's like, ta-da, Gorilla City! And it's just, it looks like the Ewok village with a bunch of random gorillas just kind of like crossing bridges. Yeah. And they're like, um, they're this not, is not intelligent. Gorilla City. This yeah. sucks. <laughs> like, There's no gold here, man. You idiot. You've, you've, you've ruined us. <laughs> Why did I think you knew where Gorilla City was? Exactly. I mean, it's remarkable that you found a Gorilla City yes. Yes. that has like platforms and crap. Right? But no. Uh, Trickster is the most entertained by it because he recognizes that this is a trick. This whole thing is a facade, and so Trickster like goes over to the big gorilla statue, uses his multi-tool in a rubber chicken device to activate the secret door that leads them to the real gorilla city. Oh, so, and because he's Trickster, he would recognize what any, a trick is. any other trick that yes. he sees. Of course, is that that's one of his powers. Sure, <laughs> I mean it seems to be powers of observation, which of course he has, he does have. Right. Uh, I don't think that's the case because then he would see tr- uh, that Captain Cold is going to trick him. all of them at the end. No, I can tell you, and I won't spoil anything with that. That uh, Captain Cold does not double cross these people. Oh. That is surprising. We get to real Gorilla City, which is, you know, a bustling metropolis. It looks like Vegas with monkeys in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, Mohegan Sun. Yeah. There's like a it's got the big tree, tree thing in the things. middle of it. Yeah. yeah. Going up to the ceiling. Because it is technically like underground, so yeah. it's in caverns, so, you know. That's cool. Yeah. yeah it's got I little like light things uh, have the sunlight come down. You got King Cola, you got... Cream Milla Gorilla Strength Hair Wax. Yeah. Which I imagine a lot of them need. Oh, well, sure. They're you covered know. in hair. Yeah. I see a motorcycle. I'm oh, on board. Well, that yeah. makes sense. They have all the stuff we have. More like a gorilla cycle. <laughs> they, they're looking around it's and like... It's a motor. It's like, it's like the bat cycle. It's not a cycle that works on bats. <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> they... <laughs> ah! He's like, this is God, not the Gorilla City that like was advertised. Like, this is like Vegas. Right. Like, this is like. Are chintzy. we in Ocean's Eleven? <laughs> By the way, we're going uh, up against like Tenny, the Terry yeah. Benedict of gorillas. If, if this is Vegas, they're gonna kill us. The house always wins. Uh, yeah. Man. No. He's like, this place is like more civilized than I was expecting. And of mm. course, in every other version of Gorilla City, it is like. It does not look like this. Oh. Like Gorilla Grodd has changed tactics. Oh. And so we do check in with Gorilla Grodd. Here he is, and he is like, he's wearing a suit, and he is essentially like, the, the, the he's he's top gorilla. Right. Yeah, he's a mob this. boss. Yeah, and he is running this place. And uh, we see like all these different people, all these different gorillas. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Ocean's Eleven, but yeah. like with monkeys and super villains. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So they're talking about like labor unions and, uh, you know, supply problems of every kind. and. <laughs> You know, so we're like, all right, Gorilla right. City is a real city. It's an analog for like the graft and corruption and crime and problems that we have in our own place. Like Gorilla City is not a utopia. You know, it's more like a fruitopia. It's like whatever. <laughs> it's like uh, Hill Valley after Biff takes over. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> One of his like inner circle uh, mentions that you know we need to start working more with the humans and uh, oh. and then it re- is revealed that like he already was because the head of his. Your human contact is dropped on the desk in front of him. Oh. And, uh, you know, Grodd smashes the table in front of him in a rage. And he's like, oh, uh, uh, I almost lost it there. You almost made me debase myself like I used to, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm too civilized for that. Right. I'm not like a like a gorilla or anything. Right. Not like we all are. Right. So anyway, he makes the guy with his gorilla Grodd powers just bash his head into the table uh, to death. That's, Why is he mad? Oh, because the guy went over his helmet. Oh. No, like he, no, 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 over. Uh, mortal around, to the side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this ape worked with the humans. He's like, hey, I got this uh, great idea. And it's like, no, 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 you did this already. Uh, you didn't get permission from me. Like, he needs to make sure he's, he's got to kick asses in order well, to make things work. Right. You're trying to make moves. Yeah, exactly. Without permission. Yeah. I it, give you permission to make Right, that moves. shows me that you are inevitably going to challenge me. Yeah, you've got so, this crazy ambition. and Yes, yeah, it's yeah, no, that's, that's not going to work. You're trying to branch out. You're trying to bring the humans into this. You're trying to cut a, pe- a slice for yourself. Exactly. No. And not cut me in. Yeah, not, that's not going to work for me. Uh, so then Grodd's wife and son 
Enter the room, his wife is just dressed like a noir femme, <laughs> you know? And she's holding the, the boy. The boy is basically just a baby gorilla. Yeah. Like he doesn't talk, he doesn't do it, he doesn't have mind powers. He's just a baby gorilla. He's, he is wearing a little jacket though, which is adorable. <laughs> But uh, she's like, uh, Grodd, can I come in? And then she sees the man beating himself to death. She's like, oh my God. And he's like, what are you doing here? I told you to stay in the tower. <laughs> Get her out of here. when I'm working. Yeah, exactly. Don't ask me about my this work. This one time you can ask me about my business. Like it's everything <laughs> from all of those crime movies in one gorilla sized package. She's even got a nice big hat. Yeah, of course. That way she can like cover her face with it. Uh. Be like, no. <laughs> so we check in with, uh, with Grimm who's another ape that's in the inner circle who's also related to Sam, who's also there. And Sam's got his patented trench coat and fedora. And he's like, hey, Grim, what's going on? What's oh, shaking? Sam's back in Gorilla City. Sam's back. It's been 10 years. He moved back in with Gorilla City. Uh, you know, clearly he did right. things. Nothing, yeah, there's nothing going for him on, even 10 years ago. World. Exactly. Yeah. So One monkey paw watches the other. glad he found his way home. Exactly. Uh, now he can bang other gorillas and it won't be messed presumably, up. Presumably, I get the feeling that uh, he's had a dry spell. And I think it's been 10 years long. <laughs> Oof. So, Even in Gorilla City. I know, right? Well, I mean, you know, once you go native, I feel like, you know, <laughs> hey, did you see that guy in the fedora? I hear he fucked a human. Oh. Gross. Exactly. Yeah, right? Oh, it's so hairless and, <laughs> and weird. Yeah. Grim, uh, the other ape, who's in Grodd's inner circle, explains like, yo, like, don't, don't speak ill of Grodd. This whole place is because of Grodd. We have, the trains run on time because of Grodd. We have uh -huh. like nice Armani suits because of Grodd. Like, <laughs> we, we live well, and that's all thanks to Grodd. And Sam explains like, yeah, it, we can thank Grodd for all of it. And then like gestures to the ghettos, mm. you know, and the homelessness problem. It, there's a little bit of discontent in Gorilla City. Right. You know, I mean, and Not Sam- Not everybody's rich wait, and, 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 and powerful. There are humans right? here. There are humans here. Those oh, are the weird. rogues. I oh. see them, but like, that's not a rogue. No, there are humans in Gorilla City. I don't know if that's like a mistake or if it's <laughs> a, if, if it's foreshadowing what's to come, but there are humans in Gorilla City. Mm. Okay. okay, all right. So uh, the, the, the rogues, they like walk through Gorilla City and they split up to get information. Cause uh, I feel like they would stand out a lot. Oh yeah, yeah big time. It must well, be somewhat hoods. normal for humans to be there. Yeah, like well, they they, they pass, they they come and go, mm -hmm. you know, but they don't they don't live here. They don't have like a zip code. Right. Uh, okay. But uh, they split up to kind of gather information because now they're like, okay, so the plan is we're gonna break into Gorilla City and steal the gold. Clearly, Snart did not know that Gorilla City is an effing Las Vegas town. <laughs> you know, like it's gonna be harder. I I honestly I thought like Grodd had like a throne. And like there'd be gold. It'd be under, under it. it. Yeah, he'd be like physically sitting right. on it. And then I could just shoot him with the cold gun and just take it and walk out through and the mirror laugh. intervention. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe like maybe maybe teabag him a little bit. <laughs> now but, I'm uh, thinking it's more like there's like stocks and bonds and crap. <laughs> and this and gold no physical stabilizes gold. the economy of Gorilla City. So like they'll miss it is my concern, you know? Or at the very least I need to know where it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I need to break into a super high tech vault made by eight, like super intelligent gorillas, why don't I just go to Fort Knox? Right, and I even know where that is. I know I where that know is. I know where this vault is. And I don't I, know anything about this place. And all I know is that there's a ton of gold thanks to a drunk ape from 10 years ago that I overheard in a bar one time. Yeah. Solid plan, Snart. You don't know if it's still there. Yeah. Okay, so, so there is no plan. The plan was to get here and then develop a new plan. Yes, which they're like, sure. oh my God. <laughs> so, that's, that's, it's not a plan. It's not a plan. It's, it's barely a concept. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, S Trickster he immediately enters into like an illegal gambling operation. He like cheats them. <laughs> and he's almost killed by gorillas, like oh, everyone. Uh, you know, always would be. It's not helping. No. What are you looking at, Ben? I'm looking at this like this game that they're playing with cards. Yeah. Oh. And the fact that there's just like it's lines poker. of coke. <laughs> On the table, yeah, man. That's it's it's hard all over. That's how Even they roll in City. Gorilla City. That's right. Yeah, but I figured if there are lines of cookie, you just do them. You don't just let it no, sit no, there. No, he's gonna do those in celebration. When yeah. I get a good hand, I'm gonna give myself a reward. <laughs> Trickster uh, reveals that he's in the commotion. He stole money from the gorillas and shows that they're gold coins. Mm. He's like, so there is gold in Gorilla City. Like we can confirm <laughs> that there is at least some gold. Right in circulation. In circulation in Gorilla it, City. It came from somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, Lisa and Bronze Tiger got real information and they hooked back up with the rest of the crew and explained like, yes, there is gold in Gorilla City. It's the heart of the city. 
will show you and they take them to the bank of Gorilla City. And there's also like a giant power center or something next door built into the rock. And they're like, don't worry about that. What, what matters is that's the bank. That's where the gold is. We're going to go in there. Mm. Don't worry okay. about it. I'm going to worry about Pretty it. Pretty sure yeah. that was mentioned because it's going to have some part to play in this book. Right. And they're also, like, dude, we this is this is not... There is no more... We have to start from zero now. Like, yeah. new plan. Huh. We're breaking into this vault. Like, we got to figure this whole thing out. Uh, these gorillas are wielding machine guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The That's size of the machine gun it would require yeah. to take down a gorilla, those things must be like 50 caliber oh, machine yeah. guns. And those, those rounds have to be like massive. They're like basically just a, like a six pound gun rounds. Yeah. Take down a freaking elephant. That's right, because they got to take down a gorilla. Snart is like, I'm losing control of the group here. So he proceeds <laughs> to threaten them. He's like, all right, no one's walking away. We're, 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 this is the plan. That's the that's the goal. We're good. All right, we got, we got our magic mirror master. We're good. We just jump into a thing. We're out of there. And he's like, what if there is no like reflective surfaces in there? And like, well, shut up, man. You know uh, what? You're gold, a stupid mirror person. Gold itself is reflective. Exactly. So yeah. we, as long as we have we one, one pallet of gold, we should be fine. But you need a reflective surface that's large enough for a person to fit through, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, so it can't just be one piece of... It can be a bar of gold. I'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> when I got my arm through. Oh, the gorillas are ripping stuck. my legs out <laughs> of their sockets. So they all defer to Lisa because, like, she's the only one who's clearly not insane. Mm. And Plus uh, she's got gold in her name. That's true. <laughs> only when she's being called the Golden Glider. But uh, they're like, what do you think? And she just... She walks off for a second. She goes, fuck Rod. You're like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Boom, let's go. That was snart. And the rest of them were like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then they all kind of like walk off and he goes, by the way, Lisa, if the plan goes crabbed, run. Huh. Like, abandon these people and save yourself. <laughs> She's like, you're a bad person. But also like, thanks for taking care of me, I guess. Mm. Um, so they all split up. She's like, if this goes south, I'm leaving you. <laughs> oh, big time. I'm going to try and get these other people yeah, out I'm of here. I'm taking everyone here and you're the one who's <laughs> getting ripped apart by gorillas. Uh, Snart has this beautiful two-page two sequence in which he just has a complete rage fest. Like, because, you know, it, it's always one bad sentence away from the whole thing just abandoning the plan. Right. But he, he like, remembers... It, it's almost like he's psyching himself up. Like, I need to remind myself that I'm fueled by anger and rage. Uh -huh. So he, like, reminds himself of going back to the... You know, the plant yeah. and the, 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 the superior's laughing at him. And he just turns red with anger. He smacks himself in the face. And he's like, all right. Yeah, they all fast. laughed at you. No. So uh, then he gets his ass kicked and Sam arrives. Uh. And Sam's like. Oh, he got his ass kicked <laughs> telepathically. Yes. And, it's, ah. and Sam's like, what the fuck are you doing here, man? Uh, I wondered if he was going to come back. Right? Yeah. Uh, so. Sam takes Cold back to his apartment slash office, mm -hmm. and they have a conversation. He's like, oh my god. Like, I mean, Sam should already know what's up. He does. Oh, that's true, because he's telepathic. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he's like, okay, I got it. Like, you're here to steal something. It's you're building the, the team. You're building the team. You're, you're here to steal the, the gold. The I get it. Ocean's Eleven thing? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, and, we had a movie like that. It was uh, Ape Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> and he's like, all right, so here's the thing. I helped design the vault. Because, you know, I have I had access to, like, Earth, or human technology and stuff. So when we, when, when Grodd, like, transitioned from, you know, utopian ape society to a creepy a sleazebag. sleazebag town, uh, we need to build the vault to make this whole thing. And it's, like, an impenetrable place. And I helped design it and because I'm smart. And I've got the blueprints and I know how to do this. And he's like, and here's how it's going to work for you. Because it's like, you got to go through all these levels. You got to get through the armed guards. You got to get through the... the Robot gorilla <laughs> sentries, which I love the robot sentry gorillas because there's also clearly a cannon in their asshole. Because, like, you know, they fling their own poop. That's funny. Wow. But they're also, like, not evolved yeah, they're not, gorillas. No, those, well, because they're, because they're drones. You know, they're what we were. Yeah, they're like walking around all off force. Yeah, right. he's like, but anyway. So what's gonna happen is, uh, if you, if even if you don't get killed by all the the the, the, the fail safes. When you leave, there's only one way out. There's only one way in or out. That's how it was designed. Uh, you will be ripped apart and eaten by apes. So no. Right. And uh, <laughs> why does he tell him all this? Be Snart literally says, "Why are you telling me all this?" Oh. And the reason is because he's like, "I'm going to help you because I want you to kill Grodd." Oh. Like that's that. I need to add this other element to the plan because right. Grodd is also never going to let you leave. 
Like, and if you do leave, he will hunt you down. Because he's like telepathic and super powerful and he's influential clearly. So it's like, you'll never be free. Mm -hmm. So you need to kill Grodd. But also, I hate Grodd and I hate this place and I hate living here and I don't like him and you want, I don't want him to die. I mean, but. you're not stuck there, Sam. Eh, he kind yeah, of but is. I want my ape Not a lot of back in the too. human world after I fucked up long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people kept looking at me cross-eyed. I pr pr probably shouldn't have let people know that that was happening. I mean... I thought they'd be cool with it, but it was it like the cover of his book. <laughs> Look, if Savage Dragon can have a relationship, so can Sam. Savage... Yeah... Savage Dragon is not an ape. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there's this beautiful sequence in which the, the, the mother ape sings a lullaby to the baby ape, and Grodd comes in, he's like, that's the lullaby that my like mother sang to me? She's like, of course, who do you think taught it to me? Like, oh, that's beautiful, you know? And uh, he's just like, yeah, you know, sorry I was late, and I'm sorry you to see me like at this savage moment in my life, you know, I, I don't want you to see that. I don't I'm want trying to, to be better. Exactly. You're still a murderer, man. Yeah, but whatever. I get you have a family now, that doesn't forgive what you just did. Yeah, so he takes the baby in his arms, he's like, oh, my little prince. Like, this is just a nice little sequence where we see, like, family Grodd. Right, so you can feel bad when uh, Kevin Cole tries to kill him later. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think you do. No, he's a horrible mobster. Yeah. Who murders people. Exactly. <laughs> of course he loves his family. Most people love their families. But this is so you can see he's a family man. That's true, yeah. So there's some tension. You yeah, know? maybe his family's threatened later, and then that adds I mean, you to know. the drama, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got their plan drawn up, they're ready to go. There's a great moment where like a cymbal banging monkey toy like hops into the fray in front of the bank where all these like cops are. Mm -hmm. I believe you mean a rock and roll Martian. I do mean a rock and roll Martian. And I love the one it picks up and goes, what is this offensive shit? <laughs> <laughs> and then it of course it explodes. It explodes, yeah. And uh, the rogues just, I love how like, they're like, yeah, we got this plan. We got all these like very specialized people. And like, the, you know, this is Trickster's move. He's gonna send a toy, which of course like he's armed by. He's got that rubber chicken and everything. Mm -hmm. Like that makes sense. And then they just all in a line go like, Aah! like all of them just run in. <laughs> uh, Definitely not Ocean's Eleven. No. <laughs> yeah, it would be great if it's like, we have the whole two thirds of the movie. And then at the end, they just bum all of them just run into the casino. <laughs> And go, give me the fucking money! Just grab everything, guns out! <laughs> yeah. ah! Heatwave then triggers the bombs he set off across Gorilla City. Oh. So now, people are distracted. The apes are distracted. Right. I feel like you should have made those bombs go off five minutes earlier. Mm, yes. Yeah, like before, before you... Before they were on their way over here because of the explosion at the main bank? Yeah. 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 Like, that's the first call is yep. to the bank. That's where they're going to go. They're going to deal with these other ones later. Exactly. Uh, it's weird. So... <laughs> The, uh, so the crew makes it to the vault, and they open the door, and this is where you go, okay, so there's no gold. I think it's all feces or something, or it's all bananas. <laughs> yeah. Is that what's going Boys on here? Moved. No, it's more gold than they thought. It's so much gold. It's so much gold, they're like, how are we gonna get this gold out of here? Wait, yeah. how did they get yes. into the vault? Oh, they just, they just rolled right up to it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Isn't it locked? No, well, uh, uh, How did they get past the robot guards? They, they beat the crap out of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, they destroyed them, and oh. then Lisa, like, figured out the code. Oh, they got the codes earlier. Oh. Yeah, they, they, so they get in, it's more gold than they've ever seen. They're like, holy shit, like, even a fraction of this would be enough. Right. It's important to remember. So Trickster and Golden Glider are on crowd control. Mm -hmm. uh, Trickster sees the wife with the baby, doesn't know the history, and is like, oh, he's a really cutie guy. Look at this little guy, you know? Snart gives Mitch his mirror gun. And he's like, all right, man, this is your, this is your cue. Your thing. And he's like, dude, like when I go in the mirror dimension, like it kind of messes me up. Like, I don't know. He's like, okay, now's not time for you <laughs> to give us your tragic backstory here, okay? Because yeah. like while that's all going on, like Bronze I, Tiger's like beating the shit out of apes. You know? I really need to know this before we left. Yes. Yeah, we're in the vault, yeah. man. No. So, all right, here we go. So they open up a... Portal to Mirror World. This is just another dimension. Yeah. And uh, he's like, "All right, like Frankie, get the gold in there. You use your telepathy, your 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 powers, and move the right. gold into the uh, into the thing." So it's Grim. Like, oh, my power doesn't work on gold. No, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen, Has it's the DC you? universe. That is, Alan Scott Green Lantern's ring doesn't work on wood. It's, it would be perfectly <laughs> acceptable that Magenta's powers don't work on gold. Green Lantern's... Wood. Yeah, wood. Yeah. He's like, That's oh no, he must have a toothpick! I'm fucked! 
You know, Grim shows up and he's like, all right, what, what situation we got here? And Sam's like, oh my God, are we under attack? Like, what's going on here? And Grim's like, yeah, don't worry. We'll just, uh, we'll just send the folks into the back. And Sam's like, there's no back. And he's like, I'm going to tell you everything, man. <laughs> he's like, oh, what? Oh, oh. He's like, oh. <laughs> good. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so we see that she's dumping all this gold in there. And Snart's like, keep going. And she's like sweating bullets and he's, you know. Oh, and she's bleeding out of her bleeding. orifices. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. bleeding everywhere. And uh, Mitch is like, dude, it's enough. And he goes, no, I want it all. Wow. And so uh, she kills herself getting all the, all the gold into the Oh, my God. Into the world. Why would she do that? Why wouldn't she just stop? Uh, because she wants to please them. Uh, oh, my God. So Mirror Master's like, you piece of shit. You know, you pushed her too hard. Now she's gone. Now you had a little thing going on. Mm. And he's well, like, yeah, they were like, yeah. you know, relying on each exactly. other to like help themselves through the right? troubles that they were going through. And he's like, she knew the risks. Like, she knew what she signed up for. And he's like, you mean like when you broke me out of rehab? Like when I wasn't ready to go? <laughs> he goes, eh, shut up. You can have a, you're gonna have enough money to, to, to go to 10 rehabs or, or, or just be high all the time until you die. I couldn't care less. <laughs> Wow, yeah, what an wow. asshole. Yeah, he's great. So then Mirror Master turns the freaking gun off, and he's like, oh, are you fucking crazy? Open it back up. And he's like, no, man. And I love seeing these two classic members of the rogues pointing their super sci-fi rogue <laughs> guns at each other. <laughs> what is the mirror gun going to do if he hits? Well, it, it could zip him into another, you know, into the mirror dimension, which, you know, if he's just stuck there, he's like, oh, you got your gold, but you're also trapped there. Hmm. Yeah, good luck getting out. Exactly. So Grimm and the and his gorilla crew blast at the rear entrance, uh, Grim grabs Mirror Master and just cracks his neck. Huh. Mirror Master's done. Oh, shit. Whoops. Well, that sucks. I know. Oh, oh. There goes the plan. There goes, oh, well, there goes that plan. I guess we have to go through the front door. Uh, also, you're never getting your gold back. No, no, no. I mean, like, look. Well, it we, is we there. Established, like, it's there, and it, no one can get at it. And as long as I got my, my mirror gun, I'm good to go. Like, I right. can get into the mirror dimension. But who's going to navigate yeah. the mirror dimension? Right. Yeah, we all said it was very hard. It, it's Well, it is hard. I didn't say it was impossible. Right. So Bronze Tiger and Heat Wave and Lisa, like, all meet up with Snart. Uh, and Snart just, like, goes to the front door, just, just opens fire. <laughs> Everyone's frozen. And he's like, that'll buy us a couple seconds. We're good. Mm -hmm. uh, Heat wave takes a bullet in the shoulder. And it takes his arm clean off because it should. <laughs> because it's, it's, a, it's a goddamn cannon. <laughs> should be. No, no, no. It's a regular bullet. Yeah, maybe they're like, oh, no, we're dealing with humans and we want to take them alive. So use the smaller guns. <laughs> oh, I can't even get my friggin' eight fingers around this thing. <laughs> so they run into the big crazy ominous building next door. And uh, when they get in there, they find that, like, okay, here's where all the humans are. And the humans are running drugs in and out of Gorilla City. And the idea is that Grodd managed to get so much money and influence and power because Grodd runs the drug trade in the world. Uh, All of it. Right. So That's he... great. And uses, like, human slaves to facilitate it. Right. That makes sense. Right? Like, that's why Gorilla City is rich. Because they're drug dealers. Yeah, yeah because they run the drugs for everything. Yes. So Snart freezes everybody, and he's like, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the crew is like, all right, well, let's go. We're, like, you know, Mirror Master's dead, but we got the gun, right? And Cold's like, oh, no, we left it. What? Yeah. It it's was, the it most was, important part it, of it the was, plan. Well, it, was, it, was, it was being held by a guy who was being murdered by an ape. I was running in the opposite direction. Oh, and Bronze okay. just laughs, and he's like, we're so fucked. <laughs> we're going to die. Girl. It's, it's over. Like, it's over. Trickster's like, oh no, don't worry. I, I kept something of value. And he opens up his duffel bag and he takes out the baby ape. <gasps> what? And they're like, what are you doing, man? What? How's that gonna help us? And he's like, it's a talking gorilla. We'll make millions. We're gonna go on TV and he'll talk and he'll do tricks and stuff. And they're like, okay, people oh. have seen talking gorillas before, man. My Only God. with sign language. This one's actually gonna open his mouth no, and say stuff. What are you stuff. talking about? Oh, gorilla Grodd. They don't know. What are Sam? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah. Oh, you mean like, <laughs> there's a precedent. No, yeah, but like, we've seen. Talking apes fight the Flash. We've never seen them like sing, you know, California Girls on the Ed Sullivan Show. <laughs> okay, but like they, Fair. they could do that any time. Arguably, a detective ape is more interesting. But right. I guess, I guess they don't show up on those shows to perform. No, so. or, or to advertise their services. Yeah. Hello, I'm Sam. Uh, I do run a private detective agency, and I'm also on the Conan O'Brien show just to promote my business. And because it's kind of novel to have a talking ape on oh, your show. Oh, do you sing any songs? Do I, sing I songs? do. What? I do, yeah, when I'm in the shower or driving, oh, oh, yeah. Can you tell any jokes? 
I mean, like, I have jokes I tell as icebreakers, yeah, but, like, I don't do it professionally. This is an open mic for me. I'm just... Well, what are you doing here? Oh, well, honestly, because I'm low on clients and I need to... <laughs> Uh, get to get the ball rolling. Oh here. my god, worst ape ever. I'm sorry. Good night, everybody. Show's over. I feel like that's kind of impressive. I mean, I'm talking. I mean, I'm, I'm an ape. I can read your mind. What am I thinking right now? <laughs> you think that you wasted your money and time getting me on your show. And you're right. Damn it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, only I can do that. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, so Trisha's got the baby. Got the baby. Yeah. Lisa's like, crap. Oh my god. What like, happened to the mom? Oh, he just, he He's just, just like, he just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't Jeez. kill them all. It's like, I slit her throat with a rubber chicken. <laughs> no, it, it's not that dark. But uh, Lisa's like, this is somebody's child. And he's like, I mean, I guess that's technically true. And she's like, no, give, it, give me the baby. Because like, Lisa's like, no, this poor thing. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna give you the baby. And then she pulls out her patented throat slicing heel <laughs> trick and, you know, figure eights into his throat and kills Trickster. Wow. And Bronze Tiger goes, he sucked. Huh. Fuck him. Yeah, but you're running out of people. You're running low on folks. Grodd checks the vault. He grabs the mirror gun. Uh, his wife... He smartly doesn't crush it. Yeah. yeah. His wife screams bloody murder. She's like, they took our son! The gang is like running out of options. Heatwave's like, well, I guess this is the part where we go out in a blaze of glory, which is definitely how I plan to go out anyway, so here we go. <laughs> no Sam problem. comes in through a secret like downstairs entrance into this room, and he's like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Like, this is not part of the plan! <laughs> yeah. You idiot! Like, you have dead rogues, you got dead apes! You're the worst accomplice I've ever had in my life! Like, what's the matter with you? And then he sees the baby, he's like, OH MY GOD! <laughs> you stole the- that's Grodd's son, you dumb asshole! You and killed us all. You killed us. Yeah, and, and starts like, it's Grodd's son? He steals it from Lisa, he's like, oh, now we've got something! <laughs> you just made my day. Yeah, exactly. So, now it's time to negotiate. Woof. Meanwhile, hey, remember Agent Chase, who's been looking for the rogues? Uh, she makes her way with the cavalry, oh, yeah. like an entire like brigade of army people, to Africa to recover the rogues. Okay. Just remember that's happening. How does she know they went there? Oh, uh, because they're a uh, clandestine organization that has means and uh, and you know and 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 no Geneva Conventions. So, I see. You know, they torture people. They we don't see. It doesn't matter. Right. Just, just know they're on their way. Okay. The whole thing is actually like a story that Snart tells about how his dad was abusive and like basically justifying what a piece of shit he is. Yeah. And he's like, and it's not gonna happen. Like, I, I'm not gonna die in some camper under the bridge as an old pathetic man being laughed at. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad was a loser. I'm not a loser. And they're all like, yeah, well, neither are we. You dipshit. Like, you're the loser. You're We the started asshole. improving ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you had a hard life. OG oh, Willikers. So, I'm Bronze Tiger, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> I had a hard time. So, um, oh, so, Cold then turns his ire to Sam, where he's like, uh, what's up with the rear entrance to the vault, you piece of shit? He's like, I didn't yeah. know, man! And so, like, this is all going crabbed. Like, Bronze Tiger's screaming at Snart. Like, mm -hmm. there's multiple dead rogues. And Sam's like, I have to get the fuck out of here. Oh no. Like, I can't be found here. Right. Like, I have a life it's, here. It's over. Yeah, like, this, this plan is fucked. Like, I'm gone. He's, he's trying to, like, figure, he's like, okay, maybe maybe I, maybe I snuck in here and then I arrested you. Nope, Grod will see through that. He's telepathic. Right. Well, uh, you'll just tell on me as well. You know what? Good, good luck. Yeah. And he just makes his way. <laughs> Actually, out. the only way out of this is for you all to die. Yeah, and for me to leave. Yeah. Because he'll still know what I did. So on his way out, uh, Snart freezes him. Yeah. He's like, no. So the baby starts crying, or I don't know what an ape would sound like if it was crying, but it's talking, <laughs> it's so doing that. if it's capable of speech, I guess it sounds like a baby. While Lisa comforts the baby, Snart talks to Mitch. Oh, and the baby likes Lisa. She does, yeah, the baby does definitely respond. Because she's a blonde. That's Sam! <laughs> no, but like all apes like blondes. All apes like blondes. You know what? <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, maybe. That's canon. That's canon. 100% of heart. the ones in this book who express it, attraction toward humans true, yeah. are toward blondes. That's fair. Why not? <laughs> He's like Bill from Kill Bill. He's a fool for blondes. Uh, you know what this book didn't have, yeah. which is very disappointing, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is uh, Gorilla Grodd didn't have like hot human women like, around. He didn't have concubines, yeah. yes. Yeah, where he's like, he went native, and he brought yeah. it back with him. Like, I rule the apes, but I bang the humans. Yeah. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. That would have kicked it up a notch. I think Bowl right. of bananas on that giant mob coffee table. <laughs> yeah, I'll, honestly, I mean like, or like. Many missed opportunities. No, 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 you know what, like, he, it, was, it was one for another. 
You can't have the concubines if he has a femme fatale wife. Mm, you know what I mean? Like you gotta right, have the, the wife true. with the son. Yeah. If you if if you keep the concubines, you might think he doesn't care about his son, so the leverage doesn't work. True. You know, yeah, there yeah. still needs to be tension. So yeah. Grodd and Captain Cold face off outside. You know what you could have done? Mm. Sorry to interrupt. No, you. no, 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 please. Still a good idea. One of his associates has like hot human women. He's like, that's disgusting. Yes. Like you're debasing yourself. Exactly. What are you like that Sam detective <laughs> guy? Like, you know better than him. Yeah. Yeah. I bet that was an idea and just, there wasn't space There's for not it. a lot you know, of... We had to cut that out. I, I'm you, sure Joss thought of it though. No question. <laughs> I assume that's the case with that human that was walking the streets with the other ape. <laughs> the prostitute like, woman? That, yeah, yeah. That pointed out earlier. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, here's the thing. There's definitely human sex workers in Gorilla City. <laughs> 100%. No question. That's can. <laughs> so... Uh, Grodd is like, all right, here's my counter offer to letting you leave and take my gold. I have the mirror gun. You probably know how to turn it on. Give me my freaking gold back, and I won't rip your arms out of your sockets and beat you to death with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, Mirror Master's dead. I know that there's no one who could open it, but you're a smart guy. You made that cold gun. I'll bet you could probably figure it out long enough to open it and get my gold out of there. Mm. And Cold's like, here's my here's my counter to that. If you don't do what I say and let me go, my sister's gonna slice your son's throat open. And he goes, oh, that's fine. I can make more of those. <gasps> oh my god. And his wife is just, what? Yeah. <laughs> no. And he's like, you know, please. The reality is, this this asshole in front of me, like, we're both flash villains. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> he's not a he's not a baby killer. He's not going to kill my son. Right, it's like I'm calling his bluff. Exactly, but you know what, all right. But, but if he did, we can make another one. <laughs> <laughs> I argue, uh, the baby, how old is the baby? You know, he's not even talking yet. He's probably what, he one? He doesn't really have a personality even. Yeah, you, you wouldn't can, even notice the difference. You wouldn't even notice. That's not monstrous or horrific at all. <laughs> so he's like, all right, and I'll tell you what, you give my gold back, you give my son back, I'll let you work for me. You know, you see, I like I your a, gumption. I got a big, I got a big operation, and I know that you are really good on assembly lines. <gasps> oh, that was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, "Here's your opportunity to show your loyalty right now." Hands in the mirror gun. Go ahead. And Snart smashes the mirror gun. Huh. He thinks that he looks at it. He thinks about his job on the assembly line. Grodd's wow. like, "Okay, kill all of them." <laughs> And, you know, his wife is like, no, save my baby! And he goes, this is gonna be more fun than a barrel of monkeys, and freeze all, freezes all of them. Just bam, 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 all of them are frozen, except for Grodd. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the uh, the other apes are trying to, like, break down the door to get to Heat Wave the and Lisa. Apes. And, yeah, the SWAT apes. And, uh, they got all the pouches. Right? And so, Bronze Tiger and Lisa decide to make their way through the secret tunnel that Sam is unfortunately unable to go through. <laughs> Maybe they're uh, independent contractors. They could be guerrilla fighters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll tell you this, there's so much action here, it's guerrilla warfare. Heat Wave stays behind, he's like, I'll cover you, because I got a death wish, I don't care. Yeah, I'm already wounded. Uh, they get into the tunnels to get back, you know, the tunnel they used, and uh, there's apes in the tunnel. And Bronze mm -hmm. Tiger's like, all right, cracks his neck, and then proceeds to, in a spectacular sequence, beat the crap out of all the apes, but doesn't kill them. Hmm. And Lisa's like, wow, you didn't kill any of them. He's like, I'm not going to break my vow, not for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Grodd's like, you should be honored for this cold. I never get my hands dirty anymore, but I'll make an exception for you. <laughs> the classic elemental fight of the ages, cold versus monkeys. <laughs> and, uh... Tail is old. <laughs> no, we don't know that. But uh, he freezes, like, Grodd's getting his big friggin' ape fist ready to crush his head, freezes his fist, oh. shatters his fist <gasps> on Cold's face. Oh, shit. That's amazing. A lot of, lot of, lot of ape puns, by the way. Do you know the mm. legend of the monkey's paw? That kind of thing. Grodd just... Proceeds to beat the shit out of Snart with his stump. Huh. Nice. Grim and company make it to Heat Wave, and he's like, whoa, because Heat Wave's got like his finger on like a trigger. Mm -hmm. He's like, whoa, let's not be hasty here. Mm -hmm. And then he sees Sam frozen making an, an escape, and he's like, you dirty son of a bitch. Like, you betrayed us. I can see it right here. Like, look at you running. Like, no, you definitely betrayed us. And as he runs to destroy Sam, Heat Wave triggers the bomb and blows up the entire facility. Oh. <laughs> uh, and yet makes it out alive. Maybe his, you know, well, suit is he like he makes it out slightly alive before he collapses. Mm. 
this catches the attention of Grodd, who's seeing like his entire drug trade operation go up in flames. Uh, this allows uh, Snart to catch up with him and punch him in the face, which is a mistake because clearly Grodd's like a silverback gorilla, and you don't yeah. punch one in the face. It's just gonna and you're a geriatric old man. <laughs> you're an old man. Uh, Grodd pins him down. I love this moment because he's like, "Do you know why I never joined the Rogues?" And I'm like, at this point, I remember reading it, being like, "Oh yeah, Grodd's a Flash villain." <laughs> And Cold's like, because you were never invited, and pokes him in the eyes, and he's like, no, because in the jungle we can learn to smell predators. And he's like, oh yeah, and you knew you were threatened? And he's like, no, because you smelled like failure and weakness. <laughs> Snart's gun is like, partially smashed. Mm. Oh, and he's holding him by his neck, and he's looking at him in the, in the eyes, and he's like, oh. everyone close to you dies. Like, look at what you've wrought. And Snart goes, you're right. Everyone close to me does die. And shoves the gun in Grodd's <laughs> mouth and then pulls the trigger and blasts Grodd's head off of his shoulders. Oh. Holy crap. The explosion from the gun blowing up blasts through Snart's chest. The gun overloads and just fires everywhere. Like the whole damn place is just covered in freeze. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> in the like fake Gorilla City, all the real gorillas are just run. Or the real Gorilla City gorillas are just making a break for it. They're like running out of there. Mm. Um, the queen of Gorilla City, uh-huh. Grodd's wife, yeah. is like, oh, my son, like, uh, and they bump into Bronze Tiger and Lisa in the jungle, and she's like, here, hmm. and gives her her son. And she takes the son, leaves, and Bronze Tiger is like, I think you might have a future working with kids. And she goes, really? He goes, yeah, I think we do. And she's like, we? And then they're both assassinated by Chase's people. <gasps> Oh. What the crap? One of Chase's guy goes, two rogues down. <laughs> and Chase goes, damn it. I told you not to fire. Oh, I'm like, whoops. Uh, man, Bronze Tiger is one of the most deadliest uh, hand-to-hand yeah. combatters in the world. Like, I'm not taking that, take chance. that chance. Exactly. So yeah. she tells them to fan out, find the rogues, and then notices it's snowing. <laughs> and we see this like horrific sequence of every rogue doing the thing they did best and then being dead. And then we see Snart and he just says, cool. And then dies. Uh, And then we wrap up uh, at the bar, Condom and King's bar. Uh And uh, uh, the the conversation is, uh, one of the D-listers is like, did you hear the rogues died? The DO is trying to cover it up, but like they don't really want to know what, they they don't want anyone to really know what happened. Uh And Condom and King goes, what's to hide? We know what happened. Snart got to all of them and then led them to their deaths. Because the thing about Snart is he always made everyone else pay the tab. <laughs> and we end with like this picture that no one took. <laughs> yeah, of of them right the before they all died, rogues, I guess. Uh, yeah, having a drink before going to their doom. city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess they stopped by the bar. Yeah, I guess. For a photo. Right? Or they like mailed the photo to him or something. <laughs> Trust me, you're gonna want this photo there yeah. Yeah. before we get back with all of our money. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna want this, yeah. I'm putting it up anyway. Well, you should be able to get the other Mirror Master to go get that gold. Oh yeah, no, well that's the great, that's the best part is like, nobody even knows the gold is there. Yeah, and no one can forever. access the mirror dimension anymore. So it's like, that's that. Yep. One day, someone's gonna open up the mirror dimension and be like, this oh! one produces gold! I'm probably gonna open it up and be crushed to death by hundreds of pounds of gold. <laughs> well, let me just, whoa, Jesus! And then someone else is gonna be rich. I'm like, whoa! Look at this whole pile of gold! And a corpse! Just, uh. I mean, look at this whole that. pile of yeah, gold! Just, yeah, yeah, a pile of gold. It, a slightly lighter pile of gold as I take the, enough gold. Enough. Because I'm not Captain Cold. Like three bars probably will do it. I'll, I'll, you said a fraction of it would be enough. I thought Trickster got away with like a couple of bars. No, Trickster not got a his, monkey. <laughs> Trickster got his freaking throat cut. But yes, yeah, he took the he took the monkey. It's yeah. yeah. But yeah, look what I got. Oh, they're like what? I solved all our problems. I solved all our problems. Our meal ticket has arrived, folks. We're gonna well, first. I gotta book some appearances on <laughs> Leno, and then we are we're set. Are you, you telling me that stupid. thing didn't make any noise while it was in his backpack? Right? Yeah. Well, probably like, you know, and they're all, they're hearing that all over the place. Yeah. You know? Hey, yeah. do you hear a monkey somewhere? Yes, everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, they're it's all around us. Babies I learned, cry. I learned to tell Especially it now. when you shove them in a backpack. Well, maybe you thought it was maybe good. Not always. I mean, no, from were, experience. I yeah, hope not. Yeah. But there's toys in there. 
Yeah. Play entertain himself. He's out of the ball. Yeah. Deadly toys. Yeah. yeah sometimes babies don't know any better. Yeah, right? Yeah. I think you're playing a game. It's just a misery fest from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. But it's a fun, like, you know what it is? It's the Wild Bunch. And the thing is, you don't say it's the Wild Bunch when you're pitching it, because right. then people know they're all going to die at the end. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, but of course, like, that's why it's like, oh, it's out of continuity. They all die at the end. Uh, it's also nice to have, like, not have a Flash in here, because then you're thinking, like, oh, maybe Flash will show up and save them or something. Right. But, like, it's like, no. no. No, Flash is gone or whatever. Flash is gone, busy, not interested. Yep. Who knows? It's not a Flash problem. No. It's like, well, that sounds like a Grill City problem. I don't. Listen, yeah. I don't Nobody that. wins in this. No. 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 Nope. Grodd dies and his city is destroyed because it's destabilized because the cold yeah, the, gone. Yeah, the, the economy's ruined. Right? Uh, and it's snowing inside. Captain Cold oh, and, and the company drugs all are all gone. gone. The drugs are gone. The drugs so, are yeah, gone. all these. Yeah, it's, it's really a shame, actually, that all of the criminal element of this book loses. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, it's actually, great. It's great for it's the a victory. World. Yeah, yeah. Like the Just League are like another victory for us. Yeah. Hey, we didn't did have to you lift a finger. That crack went way down. Yeah, like literally, all of drugs are gone, <laughs> and now it's relegated to just like these desperate pushers who only have what they got last time, and that's it. Huh? Flash, could you do some, do some reconnaissance? He swings by Gorilla City. Oh my God, it's a bloodbath down there. <laughs> Ooh. Well, if I'd been here, I could have done something, but I but wasn't, so... I wasn't. Oh, well. Rogues is available in the comments down below. Buy it. It's really fun. It's it's also cool because it's oversized. It really takes advantage of the yeah. uh, black label format. It yep. also leans into the R rating, but it isn't gratuitous. That's the thing. Like, you'd think there's a lot of gratuity in this book, but it's actually more like it leans into the genre. It's very genre heavy, yeah. and it's not afraid to go there when necessary, but it's not doing it... Uh, it's not yeah. grotesque. Yeah. The the grossest thing in the entire th book, in my opinion, is the concept of Sam having sex with a human being, <laughs> which no. only really hinted at. <laughs> no, I was talking about Rod breaking oh, his beautiful. breaking his hand yes. on Snart's face. That's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just when that up. happens and it's a stump, you're like, oh. and it's like, oh, it's like oh. and then he punches him with that, and you're like, oh man, oh, oh man, I don't want to think about that. When Grodd <laughs> dies at the end, yeah, fine. It's at, he's at least put out of his misery. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> there are tons of <laughs> apes that were frozen and like shattered in this. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, actually, yeah. Grodd shatters the apes in the way to get at Cole. Right. He doesn't care. Clearly. It's like, ah, they're, they're probably dead. dead. Yeah. I don't know. I, Can you be unthawed and survive? I don't. I don't know. Is uh, that, I mean, like with work? Mr. Freeze, yes. With we Captain haven't Cold, seen it. Not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, not in here. In the Black Label universe, no. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's fun and it's a nice marriage of art and writing and uh, you know they they get a couple of spectacular double page splashes. But to do things like it isn't like we see a double page splash of Grodd screaming his head off, smashing someone's brains in. Instead, it's like usually locations, mm -hmm. which is also cool because most artists are like, oh man, I gotta draw a goddamn town. <laughs> There aren't any cars in it, are there? There's so much going on here. It's like, yes, it's actually a bustling metropolis of cars and horses. <laughs> it's like, hey, damn it! Oh, and bicycles. Oh, nobody knows how to draw one of those! <laughs> but yeah, so it's a, it's a fun romp, and it's a, and it's dark, and it really plays with the conventions. It's just a book where it's like, hey, you know all those, all those people who want mature rated DC comics, continuity heavy stories that don't feature Batman? You're welcome. Yeah, it exists one. and it's dirt cheap. Go buy it. Pick it up. It's worth it and it's cool and I love it. It is cool. And and if and every character is... in it is somebody. Like there's there's no character in here that isn't like oh you made him up for the book. Nope. Yeah. This is a great fable, like a tale. Yeah, it's true. Where, like the lesson is, don't be, be bad. Who, <laughs> don't be bad. Be who you are. Yeah. Right. Those people who Snart was convincing to be like, hey. No, do one last thing with me. Yeah. No, you should have stuck with your life as exactly. it was. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get bullied by losers. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a proverb, but uh, it should be. Yeah, and if you're Captain Cold, don't get uppity. Know your place. Know your place. You're Captain Cold. You're less <laughs> you're, popular you than You should Mr. be on Freeze. the assembly line. You're, yeah. you're supervisor Cold. Well, somebody you got a promotion, up. and you got all butthurt about it. Yeah. What's wrong with you? And somebody was like, you could have sold the technology to the State Department. Yeah. You dipshit. But no, you're like, no, yeah. I made this. It's mine. Yeah. I'm going to use it to get my big score. Well, Your I got to be a score would have been a patent, you dipshit. Yeah, no. I, I want to be... Like a big shot. Yeah. Because it, it never would have been enough. That's the thing. Yeah. For Captain Cold, like, he, he killed someone just to have all the gold. He didn't even know there was that much gold. Had to have it all. Like, that is, that is you to a T, man. Yep. Yeah, and if he'd been happy with, like... Half the gold. They would have gotten away. They would have gotten they away. easily gotten away, but no, it's all. But the thing is, like, 
if he had gotten away with like a quarter of the gold and been living pretty, he still would be plagued by the thought of the rest of the, it. Being yeah, the there. gold he didn't get. Yeah. Yep. But, oh, I could have been like a king. I yep. ruled Every like time a that nation. it comes up in the Caymans, they're just talking about it. He's like, yeah, but we could have had more. Yeah. And you it's like, losers dude, had to stop me. Yeah, right? Now I have to settle for like the 75 foot yacht when I could have had a 120 foot yeah. yacht. Yeah. <laughs> but he would have then wrangled. Like the penguin and the Riddler mm -hmm. and whoever. Like, okay, no, you're what? in. You're, in the, you're now your rogues. Now he you're would have drawn rogues. attention, and then other people would be like, "How'd you get all this money?" Oh yeah, no. He he would have been. And he would and he would have been murdered, and he would have spilled the beans first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then other people would be attacking real cities. Yeah, right. No, actually, knowing that Captain Cold got away with it would have painted a target on Gorilla City to get the rest of the gold. Mm. Then you would have had a sequel to this where Captain Cold gets another crew to get the rest of the gold, but he's fighting against other like roguish teams to get to there. Like there's a Suicide Squad, and Man Waller's like, I need that gold. <laughs> oh, it's like Rat Race, except <laughs> yes! everyone's oh trying to God. steal that gold. That's, okay, that's canon. <laughs> except for the Captain Cold part, because everyone literally dies. Yeah, he's but dead, you know what but... you could do? Well, now it's a race to get to the mirror dimension. Yes, oh. But I think the, I think the last lesson at the end is that no one knows about it. Like, right. no one who actually survived yeah, is yeah. aware of the plan, the gold, the mirror dimension, can have access to it. Is there another mirror gun? There's gotta be, but to what end? It's Again, like the heart of the sea diamond. Yes. <laughs> it was there the whole time, and now it's going back in the ocean, yep. and no one's ever gonna find it. Exactly. It, it, this is, no, the, 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 the true ending to this book is that one day someone will find another mirror gun and be crushed to death by hundreds of pounds of gold. <laughs> And then someone else will be rich. Whoever it is that is that guy's roommate. Cool. Ah! Sweet. How do I get this out of here? <laughs> anyway, that's it for Back Issues. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. This whole episode was a tangent. I was it like, was. Oh, man, what's going to be the funny thing we say at the end with all the credits? And I'm like, nothing. We I, don't, did it. I don't know. We, we said did it, it all. all. It's all been said. Ooga booga. I was, I was mildly disappointed. <laughs> I was mildly disappointed when there was no like great heist. Yeah. It's like th this oh, plan. I know. Th this, this plan, plan is sucks. nothing. It's like nothing we this came plan. up with a plan. Yeah. Like, uh, get it. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Ray. Uh, now. <laughs> get it. Yeah. Like, but the way it like unravels, like, oh no, that's the point. Yes. Like they're, they're not stupid. good at their job. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and they all die. <laughs>